GDDR5X only just came out and Samsung's already trying to one-up Micron with GDDR6. Obviously the numeric follower of GDDR5 if that wasn't obvious. And then of course SK Hynix is trying to start pushing HBM3 at least in the research and development side before HBM2 is really on the mass market. So those are two of the main items for this news video, but we've got a couple more coming up. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Iowa Power and their new Element Gaming PC with the full tempered glass side window and LEDs. It's basically an S340 that's been modified by iBuyPower if you're curious about what the base case is. So GDDR5X is brand new. That is from Micron. It's only found right now in the GTX 1080 and the Titan X Pascal cards. And it operates at 10 gigabits per second on those devices. But Micron has previously demonstrated that the at least the earlier versions of the product were able to hit somewhere in the 13 ish 12 to 13 gigabit per second speed. Obviously, that's not on the cards yet, but memory tends to have a range like that. Like with GDDR5, the kind of high end that we're seeing today is about eight gigabits per second from the best GPUs on the market with the best memory, and then it'll scale down to something closer to six. So there is a decent range there, and that's true for the new GDDR6 memory as well, which Samsung details as having a range of about 14 gigabits per second at the low end to about 16 at the high end. So there's room for growth, and it's still outperforming G5X today with the 14 gigabit per second minimum. GDDR5 has been in production use since 2008, and in its present fully matured form, it is operating at that eight gigabit per second number in the RX 480 and the GTX 10 series GPUs, at least most of them. Samsung's increased speed is only one of the advertised features right now. There's also a reduced voltage requirement for the speed. So we're at 1.35 volts for the 14 to 16 gigabit per second speed range, coupled with lower voltages than even G5X by using LP4X. Samsung indicates a power reduction upwards of 20% with post LP4 memory technology and is looking toward 2018 for production of GDDR6. So that does actually give G5X some breathing room as of now. As for HBM, SK Hynix is already looking toward the world of HBM3. HBM2 in its current form is only really existent on the Tesla accelerated card, accelerated card, the P100, using the GP100 GPU. Uh, that was the first Pascal chip shown. So that's the only place that HBM2 really is known to exist in a form that's being produced right now. HBM2 obviously didn't hit the gaming side of Pascal. We're not quite sure when the next AMD series of cards will come out, but we do know that they will feature HBM2. So other than Vega, what we're looking at for HBM3 is a doubled throughput. So it's theoretically on a 4096 bit interface with upwards of two terabyte per second throughput. And that's 512 gigabytes per second per stack of HBM3. And we'll talk about this tech more in the semi distant future because it is a ways off. There was also news this week from Tom's Hardware who spoke with some of the PCI SIG folks to talk about power draw and the power allowance in the PCIe interface for version 4.0. This primarily detailed a minimum spec of 300 watt power transfer through the slot, but could be upwards of 500 watts. It's not finalized yet. And without even talking about the bandwidth promises, which by the way, moved to nearly two gigabytes per second per lane, the increase of power budget will mean that the industry could begin a shift away from PCI Express power cables. And the power would obviously still come from the power supply, but it would be delivered through the pins in the PCIe slots and the cards rather than through an extra cable. This same setup is what allowed cards like the 750 Ti and other low power cards to pull all of their power through the PCIe slot rather than requiring any PCIe power cables from the power supply at all. So that's the future we're looking at, and that would work on the high end cards on market today. So it's a pretty interesting one, and the PCIe Gen 4 spec should be ratified by end of year 2016, of course. They're currently on version 0 0.7, 0 0.9 is to come, and 1.0 should be before the end of the year. One quick note though, we don't yet know the rollout plans for consumer products, so that's just ratifying the spec. It doesn't mean it'll be available in platforms just yet. AMD also detailed more of its Zen architecture, something we talked about last week when the company camped out near IDF, Intel's conference and hosted its own mini conference of sorts to talk about Zen. The Summit Ridge chips have primarily been on display thus far, showing an eight core 16 thread demo with AMD's implementation of SMT, 
but we haven't heard much about other processors just yet. AMD is ditching modules from the Bulldozer series in favor of new CPU complexes or CCXs. Each of these CCX units hosts four CPU cores and each CCX runs 512 kilobytes of L2 cache per core as seen in this block diagram with L3 sliced into four pieces of eight megabytes total for low order address interleave cache. AMD says that each core can communicate with all the cache on the CCX and promises the same latency for all accesses, definitely big news. And given this architecture, it looks like the smallest chips in terms of core count will be four core units because each CCX does have four cores. The only reason you would really see something less than this is if they're disabling cores either to fill a market or because a unit failed validation, which has happened in the past, but AMD's been moving away from things less than four cores for quite some time now, so we would expect Zen to stick to that trend at least for the market that we're most interested in on the gaming and sort of enthusiast user side of things. So that's the main news items for this video. Check out the rest of the channel for reviews, things like that. We have a, an EVGA hybrid comparison coming up versus the MSI Seahawk and uh, Corsair Hydro Graphics, same card. But that's coming up next week or very shortly anyway. As always, thanks for watching. Patreon link the post real video. I'll see you all next time.